of all you moving loving maniacs, the Oscars is right around the corner, so for this episode of The Rundown, I'm going to give small reviews of some of the nominees for Best Picture. Now granted, I haven't seen all the nominees, like I haven't seen American Sniper, The Grand Budapest Hotel, or The Imitation Game. Now those in particular, I haven't seen because either I'm just not really interested in seeing it, or I wanted to see it, but it's just not a priority right now for me to go see it. But for those that I have seen, here's pretty much a mini review of the movies that I have seen. Starting with... Selma. Now, I saw this movie back in January, and I didn't do a review of it because I wanted to wait till this moment to do so. And this movie was actually released back in December of last year as a limited release. If they released it worldwide, it would have counted as a 2014 movie, and I would have put it on my best 2K14. So Selma is about Martin Luther King. It's not particularly about his life, it's about an aspect of his life. I like it when biographical films do that. They just focus on one thing about the person. In this particular movie, it's about Martin Luther King doing the civil rights movement and fighting for African Americans to vote. Although it's said on paper that they could, they went through such a horrific, corrupted, disgusting, violent things to do so. The people across the nation said there needs to be a change, and Martin Luther King marched with them across the bridge from Selma, Alabama to Montgomery, Alabama. Now, the crown jewel of this movie is David Oyelowo as Dr. King. This is by far one of my favorite performances of this year. Prior to this movie, I was aware of his ability as an actor. He played Dr. Jacobs in Rise of the Planet of the Apes, and he played Forrest Whitaker's son in Lee Daniels' The Butler. He's such a great actor, and he is British, and he hit the accent very well. He became Dr. King. The entire time I was watching this movie, I did not see David Oyelowo. I saw Dr. King, and he was convincing, and one of the things I liked about this performance is that they humanized him. They didn't praise him and make him out to be this great guy. They conveyed that he is still a human being and at times he doubted himself like, I don't know if we're gonna win. One of the other cool things about this movie is all the horrific stuff. You watch it and it just takes me to a place that makes me think of my ancestors and appreciate all that they went through just so the generation of today can be where they are today. The reasons I like movies like this is why I love 12 Years a Slave and Selma. They convey how much we were treated badly. The portrayal of President Lyndon B. Johnson was really good. I know there's some controversy around it, but for what this movie was trying to do, I like LBJ in this movie. Throughout the whole movie, Martin Luther King was trying to put LBJ on board, and he's just like, I want to help, but I can't. It could ruin my reputation, and this, that, and the third. In the end, Selma was well acted, well illustrated. I'm shocked it didn't get a nom for Best Actor, and the director of this movie didn't get a Best Director nom, but hey, it still got a Best Picture nom, so that counts for something. Well, I'm going to give Summer an A plus for full price. I say full price because there were some sections within the movie that kind of slowed down, but it doesn't detract from the overall movie. Next up, Boyhood. I heard about this movie last summer and I was like, cool, another indie type film. Not playing near me, I guess I'll wait until it comes out. And when I finally saw it, I knew absolutely nothing about it. I just knew it had some nostalgic stuff in it, like the DVC bed cover and the Game Boy Advance SP in the beginning of the film. Director Richard Linklater's cinematic achievement and masterpiece is about a boy who goes through life growing up. As the film went on, I was like, wait, wait a minute, is that the same boy? I wikipedia this movie and, I, and it said that it was the same boy growing up. Apparently this movie was made over the course of 12 years. Richard Linklater wanted to capture life with this boy and his sister, played by the director's own daughter, Lorelai Linklater. The film also stars Patricia Arquette and Ethan Hawke. They play the kids' parents, and it was cool seeing those two actors go from them in 2002 to now. And this 12-year film definitely pays off because they both got Oscar noms for Best Supporting Actor and Actress. This film really surprised me and caught me off guard. The movie is long as hell, but it is all worth it in the end. I say Richard Linklater deserves his Best Director nom. This was definitely a huge cinematic achievement and having actors age without using makeup effects. And the story was very good following this boy's life. I will give Boyhood an A plus for full price. Next up, Birdman. Everybody and their mama is talking about how good Birdman is. Everybody keeps saying, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And that Michael Keaton is sure to win an Oscar for this movie. So the film is about Michael Keaton playing this guy who is an actor who used to be a superhero like Michael Keaton. And then he wanted to stop being Birdman and focus on more serious things in acting like Michael Keaton. On that concept alone, that is just cool in itself, because the film is kind of a satire about what it is about to be an actor in the movie industry. 
the movie is not just about Michael Keaton, it's also about this play that he is trying to do, but the play is having dozens of problems, and then Edward Norton comes in. The best thing about this movie, and that I can appreciate it, is that this is all filmed to be one shot. I swear, the camera never stopped moving, although you could tell when they stop when they transition. As far as the performances, Michael Keaton kills him in this room because he is, in a sense, pulling from his own life experience. And he is conflicted with himself, he's thinking, do I keep trying to be a great, respected actor, or do I sell out and become the Birdman? This movie is speaking to me because I think this movie is pretty much speaking to us about Hollywood as we know it today. Hell, even Emma Stone in this movie, I always liked Emma Stone, but I really loved her in this movie. She has one of the most honest monologues I have ever heard, and when you hear it, you're like... I'm sorry, I need to pause this movie because that was one of the most honest monologues I've ever heard in... Whew, I need to walk that off. This movie was really unique, it was well written, well acted, and made me feel like I was with the characters. I will give Birdman an A plus for full price. Next up, Theory of Everything, which is about the life of Stephen Hawking, who was played by Eddie Redmayne, and Stephen Hawking's wife, who was played by Felicity Jones. In this movie, it's about Stephen Hawking meeting his wife, and through that, he discovers the theory of black holes, but then he gets Regarian's disease, which is a disease where his muscles get weak, and as the movie progresses, he just gets worse and worse. And if there is anyone that doesn't know what Regarian's disease is, it's pretty much the reason you dumped a bucket of ice over your head last summer. One of the key things I loved about this movie is that even though the man is getting weak, he still continues to find theories, and he gets some more time to live. And we see the relationship between him and his wife unfold. And she tried to stay strong, and they both managed to get three kids together. This was really an uplifting film. Eddie Redmayne was really great in the film. It was great seeing the life of Stephen Hawking staying motivated and positive given the circumstances. Really, my only negative about this film is the fact that it's about the life of him and his wife, and there were times in this movie that it felt like a chick film. But I still thoroughly enjoyed this film. The cast was great, the story was great. This is yet another biofilm that was really inspiring. The Theory of Everything is an A plus for full price. And lastly, Whiplash. Oh my god, I love this movie and I wish I had seen it in 2014 so it could be on my top 10 of 2014 and it would have been in my top 5. So Whiplash is starring Reed Richards himself, Miles Teller. He wants to be a professional jazz drummer, he wants to be the best, so he enrolls in the school and takes this class that is run by J. Jonah Jameson himself, J.K. Simmons. Miles Teller knows that if he goes to his class and goes under his wing, this man could change his life, he'll go places, and he will make him be all he can be. And little did you know, that was an understatement because J.K. Simmons in this film, he is such a dick. He is such a hardcore asshole. I swear, as I was watching this movie, J.K. Simmons in this movie reminded me of one of my old wrestling coaches, Times 10. But that is the crown jewel of this movie, because J.K. Simmons is so good in this movie, his dialogues and monologues in this movie are so good, I just want to watch his movie over and over again so I can memorize it, and his insults are sure to be on YouTube videos, great movie insults. J.K. Simmons got nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and he is sure to win. I am putting money on But it's not just the verbal abuse, he's also coming at him at all angles, physically, mentally, and psychologically. It's not just the performance in this movie, the music is really good too. I play the drums as well, so this movie was right up my alley. But the jazz music, I'm not big on jazz music, but I know some people like jazz music. But when a movie can make jazz music seem cool, that gets brownie points from me. The last 15 minutes of this movie are the single best moments in the movies of 2014. It was intense and well paid off. I was watching this movie at home with surround sound and the speakers made me really feel like I was in the theaters with the music and sound of this movie. And I absolutely love this movie so much I will even say I love this movie more than Drumline. Now granted, they both deal with drums but they're kind of two completely different movies but hey. But I personally like this movie more than Drumline because it deals with the question like, how far are we willing to go for perfection? After the movie was done, I stood up and clapped. When a movie makes me stand up and clap in my own home, there is no reason I can't give this movie an A++. So therefore, Whiplash is an A++. Wow, some really good movies and some good competition. For my money, I will say should win, Whiplash will win Birdman. If Summer wins, I won't complain. 
That's it for the day. You like what you see? Subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to my other channel. The links are in the description below. And be sure to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. And be sure to check out my website and my other window videos. Peace.